good morning children today we'll be seeing the second part of electronic devices yesterday we have seen the junction diode working and i explained to you about forward bias and reverse bias of junction diode today we'll be studying the rectification action that is we will see diode as rectifier so what is the meaning of rectification or what is rectifier rectifier is a device which converts ac into dc so we know that ac current has change in the magnitude at every instant of time and after regular interval of time there is a change in the direction also reversal of direction also so such current is called or current or voltage is called alternating current or alternating voltage alternating means after every half cycle after every half cycle the direction is changing and not only that at every instant of time instant of time the magnitude is also keeping on changing so this won't be of use for certain cases so we may have to have constant amplitude current flowing in the same direction which we know is dc so as time passes the current or voltage which is not changing its magnitude as well as direction is dc so the rectifier is a device which converts alternating voltage or current to the direct voltage or current so what is the principle of rectifier we know that the semiconducting diode conducts only during forward bias because of low resistance so what is forward biasing when p section is connected to positive terminal of the battery and n section is connected to negative terminal of the battery the diode is said to be forward biased so in that condition yesterday we have seen the depletion region becomes thin and the applied voltage opposes the potential barrier therefore resistance of the diode decreases so its conductivity increases so this unidirectional conducting property of diode is utilized in this rectification action so we will see how full wave rectifier is functioning a full wave rectifier has two pn junction diodes say d1 and d2 this is the circuit symbol of junction diode this triangular shape is the p section and this vertical line represents the n section the ac to be rectified is connected to the primary coil and the secondary coil is kept near to that the p sections of two diodes d1 and d2 are connected to the secondary coil now the two n sections are connected like this and through center tap the voltage is divided among the two diodes now this is the load resistance rl output is taken across this rl rl is a load resistance now we will see what happens when ac is or alternating voltage is applied across this primary coil so this is the input voltage applied which is changing as time passes now when this input voltage is applied here we'll see what happens now during one half cycle let us say this upper portion of the p is negative and lower portion is positive due to mutual induction there will be a phase reversal and this will become positive this will become negative so because of the center tap this voltage is divided so this will be negative and this will be positive sorry this will be so now you see the junction diode d1 the upper junction diode d1 is forward biased because positive is connected to this p section and negative is connected to this n section so this is dividing the potential 
across this and this. So during this half cycle, first half cycle, what happens? D1 diode is forward biased and D2 is reverse biased. So only D1 will conduct. And this arrow head like portion of this P section also tells you the direction of conventional current. So the current will pass through the load resistance in this direction that is from right to left. So this happens during first half cycle. So in the, during first half cycle, the diode D2 is not connecting because of the reverse bias. This you can see from the diagram, negative is connected to this one and P section and N section is connected to the positive. Therefore, this will not conduct during the first half cycle. Now during second half cycle, what happens? The upper portion of the primary coil becomes positive and lower portion becomes negative. Therefore, here due to mutual induction, this end will become negative and the lower end will become positive. As I explained to you earlier, now which, which diode will conduct? The diode D2 will conduct because now in this condition, diode D2 is forward biased and D1 is reverse biased. Therefore, during the second half cycle, the conduction is only due to D2. Now we will see what is the direction of current. As I told you, this arrowhead of P section also gives the direction of the conventional current. So during next half cycle also, through the load resistance, you see the current direction is same, that is from right to left. So we will represent it in the graph. So now this is output voltage. So we will extend it. So when you draw this graph, it is better to draw one below the other so that it will be clear what happens during every part of the input signal. So during positive half cycle, the diode D1 conducts, therefore we will get the output. And during negative half cycle, the diode D2 conducts, so again we get the output. So this is due to D1, this is due to D2. Similarly, we can extend this. So what you get is like this. So in the beginning I told that we want DC current, but what we are seeing here is output of this full wave rectifier is like ripples. There is some variation in the voltage. So how to remove that? Because our aim is to get the constant value of current that is DC like this. So the magnitude of the current should not change. No doubt the direction is not changing here. We get unidirectional current only, but what about the magnitude? Magnitude is changing. So to remove these ripples. So for DC, we want the constant amplitude. So to get the constant amplitude, what is done is the output of the full wave rectifier is fed to the filter circuit. The filter circuit will remove these ripples. That is variation in the voltages and we can get the constant current. So about the filter circuit, you will be studying in the degree classes. So for 12 standard syllabus, you just have to mention about the filter circuit. That is enough. So we have studied about now two section device that is PN junction diode. So next we have to study about junction transistor. So the next topic is junction transistor. So junction transistor is three section device. So the first section is emitter, this is base, central one and this collector. So this, from the diagram you will see that it is a three section device. So it will have a three terminal, it will have three terminals like this. So from the diagram itself we can understand that the junction transistor is produced by having the sandwich of one type of semiconducting material which is thin layer between, in between two similar type of semiconducting device, but it should be of other type. If the uh, middle region, the thin region is of N type, the other two sides should be of P type and vice versa. So 
based on this we have got two types of transistor that is pnp and npn now in this diagram you see here i have mentioned e b c what are these letters significant now e represents emitter b represents base and c represents collector so these are the three sections of transistor so from the name itself we can say that emitter emits majority carriers so what are majority carriers in this p section holes positively charged holes so in pnp transistor emitter emits the majority charge carriers holes and in npn transistor the emitter emits the majority charge carriers electrons negatively charged electrons so emitter emits majority charge carriers so what will be the function of collector can you guess when emitter emits collector will collect so the collector collects the majority carriers emitted from the emitter then what is the function of this base because it is in between emitter and collector it in it gives the interaction proper interaction between the emitter and the collector so in this npn transistor also we have emitter base and collector so the emitter section if you see from the diagram it is thick and it will be heavily doped doping we have studied yesterday it will be heavily doped the emitter section and base is the thin layer and it is lightly doped the reason for this we will see the collector is the right hand side of the thick section which is moderately doped so you should know these things that is emitter is heavily doped and its thick layer base is the lightly doped region which is uh, uh, thin region and collector is the thick layer which is moderately doped so the same thing applies here also npn transistor also now normally we will not draw transistor by this the circuit symbol is something else the way we have drawn diode like this this is circuit symbol so circuit symbol of transistor is like this so now one the slanting line represents emitter and this line represents base and the upper one represents the collector now how to distinguish the representation of npn and pnp now with the circuit symbol you have to understand that there should be an arrow to distinguish between emitter and the collector and the arrow is drawn only on the emitter only on the emitter and this arrow should be towards n section this you have to remember the arrow should be towards the n section so and it also represents the direction of emitter current also so the arrow on the emitter line represents the direction of emitter current so when one current is leaving other two currents will enter because the transistor action follows kirchhoff's junction rule so when emitter current is coming out when emitter current is coming out other two current should enter so that it follows the equation ie equal to ic plus ib so the collector current is governed by this equation that is ie equal to ic plus ib so the current which is coming out is ie so other two current should enter so this the, the uh, direction of the current should be drawn carefully in the circuit diagrams so this is your npn transistor so how to draw the pnp transistor so where should be the arrow the arrow should be on the emitter section and it should be towards n so it will be like this so from this only you have to identify whether it is npn or pnp transistor now there are three sections i told you the transistor can be connected in the circuit in three ways now if you see this one output input will be applied across these two and output will be taken across these two so if you see input is applied across the base and the emitter base and the emitter and output is taken across collector and the emitter so if you see here 
emitter is common in input circuit and output circuit. So, we say this type of connection is common emitter configuration. Why common emitter? Because emitter is common both in the input circuit and the output circuit. Same way we can draw there also. I told three types. So, we will see other one. Suppose collector is here and if input is across base and the emit base and the collector and output is across emitter and the collector. So, now collector is common between input and output. So, this will be the common collector configuration and you can easily guess what will be the common base configuration wherein you will have base common between input and output. So, there are three modes of connection of transistor in the circuit, but we will be studying about this common emitter configuration because that is only in the syllabus. Moreover, common emitter is chosen or it is preferred because we have more current gain and voltage gain in this which we will be studying in the due course. So, I hope you understood about circuit symbol, how to represent the emitter with an arrow and the arrow should be towards n section. So, we will see how the transistor works or transistor action. Working of transistor is otherwise called as transistor action. We will see how it is functioning. So, let us take the example of NPN transistor. So, NPN transistor is the P section sandwiched between two N sections. So, we know that in the N side or N section, the negatively charged electrons are majority carriers and the holes are minority carriers. Similarly, the collector side we have N section. So, the negatively charged electrons will be majority carriers and holes will be minority carriers. So, this is the collector section, emitter section sorry left hand side is emitter section, right hand side is collector section. Now, in the base region if you see it is a P section. So, in P section we know it has holes that is positively charged holes as majority carriers and electrons as minority carriers. 